everybody. It is three o'clock. It's three o'clock. We are going to make a start. It's three o'clock. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to do a Bible study on the topic of the Sabbath. This is going to be a new, unusual Bible study. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. We're going to watch. Um, there's a video that Anderson sent me, and we're going to cut it up into sections, look at the various sections, and see if there's any validity in what is being said. If not, why not? If there is validity, what is valid about it? basically analyze it like that okay so that's that's our approach so we're not going through a typical um bible study on the sabbath you know you know start creation and all that we're just going to look at this person's argument he's a sunday worshiper and he's basically saying why do you worship why do they worship on sunday it's an it's an unusual argument which i hadn't heard before but of course you know there's only one truth okay so let's start with prayer father god we are seekers after truth. We do not want to walk in darkness or in error because we know we will be led astray. And we're prepared to sacrifice everything for truth. We pray, there, Lord, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to teach us. We cannot learn without your Holy Spirit. Unblock our minds, unblock our thinking so that we can um, assimilate this information, hear from you, and grow as a result. We don't want to be the same person. We want to be more like Jesus every day. So we pray the Lord that you'll grant us this, because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Joel, shut that door, please, for that bedroom. Okay, Sister Paula, Evangel, let's get going. Okay, so this is the guy. We're going to watch the video. Oh, and this. So I'm not going to paraphrase his words. I'm going to let him speak for himself, and then we'll, remember, it's only a section. We're going to watch at a time. I'm okay. We 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 go through the whole video, but we're just going to break it up in sections. Okay. So. First of all, while you're going through this video, you're going to notice he uses a version of the Bible. I do not know what version it is. He uses some weird, some weird version. Words are added and words aren't quite. So I'm going to stick to the King James Version of the Bible, okay? Because it's one of the oldest versions. It's closer to the original, okay? So I'm just going to let you know. When, you, when you're doing Bible study, especially when it's doctrinal Bible study, you need to stick to the King James Version. In your personal devotional time, when you're just reading on the plane, you're just listening to something as you go along, listen to whatever version you like. But when you're doing actual doctrinal studies, stick with the King James Version of the Bible. That's the first thing. First thing. The second thing is the truth matters. The truth matters. Now, listen to what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying, don't use this argument with Adventists. Okay, because you won't win, basically, because you can't find a verse. He said, don't use the argument with Aventus. My thinking is slightly different. My thinking is, I want to know what is truth. It's not about winning arguments. It's about what is the truth. Okay, yeah, what is the truth? If it's the truth, I will follow it. Okay, so if the Catholic Church proves something to be true, I will follow the truth, okay? It doesn't matter where the truth comes from, as long as it's truth. So the truth matters. Remember, we, we have this phrase. You're going into court, you, you, you play, they, the court church says, do you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God, and you say, I do. You don't, you don't have to place your hand on the Bible or anything. But you want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That is important. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, the truth. Let me tell you what, how powerful the truth is. Okay. Okay. If you tell one lie, if you tell one lie, okay, the person you lie to will say, 
What else have you been lying to me about? Yeah. Okay? The truth matters. The truth absolutely matters, okay? Because you, if you tell a lie, okay, if you're not seeking the truth in one area, then other people start saying, the, the people you lie to will say, oh, what else aren't they? What are they hiding from me? Okay? So, like, for example, like, with, with the pandemic that went by, okay, we found out that they, people basically lied to us, okay? And then we start thinking, what else have they lied to us about? And we question all of it. So now we think it's better not to trust them, okay, than anything else. And we, we can get to that point. So people of God, as Bible people, we need to give the truth. If we, if we don't know the truth, say we don't know the truth, or we only know this part of the truth. But let's stick with the truth. First girl, then Phil. Yeah, trust is very fragile. Mm-hmm. Almost nearly completely impossible to be smart. Mm-hmm. There'll always be that little thing in the back of your mind. Just like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the, you know, the thing about it is they looked in your face and they lied to you. Looked you straight in the eye and they lied to you. And you thought, wow, how can you just lie to me like that? You know, Phil. And this is what you were saying, wasn't it? It takes a lot of truth to gain trust, but just one lie to lose it all. And listen carefully, you know, like Professor Keller. And I remember listening to the news and saying, these are more knowledgeable, more educated people than I. You know. Fauci, very steady. People in our one little neighborhood, men my age, died in one week. Mm. That's right across from the church. Mm. Mm. And I said, Am I being foolish? So I don't understand all I know about a lot of things. It just makes sense. Who do you? Listen to me. I mean, I'm, that seems. I grew up as a kid in a little small pox and a whole list of things that seem that seem to work. But that's that. It was a different America. They did do that for greed purposely. When I think about, there was a lot of greed in selling a lot of pills. But anyway, I still. Don't understand. There's a difference in intelligence and heavenly wisdom, mm -hmm. and I'm searching for the latter mm -hmm. more than the first. But it's still the devil is the master of the sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just trying to get this microphone because I want to make sure people online can hear your comments. So, yeah, just give me just a moment. I'll just put it here. Proof matters, okay? Now, with authorities, the government, Fauci's and, you know, PhD people and so forth, God is wiser than them all. And they use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, okay? So I have no trust. Just because somebody has a PhD, doctorate, blah, 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 and this is position, this position, it means nothing. If God says this is wrong, there's a better way, I'm just going to take the, the God's way, okay? Okay, the mayor of, of Chicago was the greatest liar in the world. Mm -hmm. He never lost a, 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 
a vote. What do you call it? What election. election. Yeah, he, he never lied. I mean, he, he never lost. You had to be part of the mainly of the daily machine and you would lose. You had to lie because he was a, the, the biggest liar that ever lived as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, amen. So truth matters. So in our, in our pursuit in Bible study, the aim is to find the truth. You know, Jesus says this, and he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Not winning an argument will make you free. Not proving a point. The truth will make you free. Remember the woman at the well. He meets this woman at the well. Okay, John chapter 4. And he's, he has this discussion with her. And as he's going into it, she's getting more and more baffled about what he's saying and everything. And then he basically says this. Ye worship he not know what. He know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So God the Father is actively looking for people who are pursuing the truth. Okay, God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we cannot um, accommodate a lie, a half truth, because we cease to be a true worshipper of God. Okay, so wh when we are doing Bible study, we have to have a specific aim. And the aim is not to win arguments. That's why we don't get into debates with people. The aim is not to win arguments, to prove someone right or wrong. The aim is to discover what is true. That is the aim. Okay. Remember Pilate with Jesus. He's having this conversation with Jesus. Pilate gets to meet Jesus and he's having this conversation with Jesus. And in John 18, he says this, what is true? These are the words of Pilate. What is truth? Okay. And it's so important. Now we know that it's only the Holy Spirit that can lead us into truth. Amen. Otherwise, we would be deceived. These, these spiritual concepts can be so mind-boggling that we will be led astray. So we need something outside of us, outside of humanity itself, to lead us into truth. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says this once again in the book of John. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, when he says guide you, you must realize that there is a process by which God is leading you. So you start here, and God is going to lead you into truth. You shouldn't get stuck into in one place, because it's a process, it's a journey. We are forever growing. Even as Adventists, been an Adventist all my life, there's still more to learn and more to obtain. So I'm still growing and learning and developing. We know that even in heaven, we will be learning more and more things about God. So the Spirit will still be guiding us into truth. So we should never get complacent, never get settled, never say, okay, we've got the truth. We are obtaining more of the truth. The process is to seek truth. Now, when we hear truth, it's dangerous to ignore the fact. It's dangerous because you hear it and you go, and you're trying to blank, blank it out, block it out, try, trying to ignore the facts as if it's not there. That is dangerous. Now, let me tell you some literal facts, facts of the matter when it comes to a Sunday and the change. Because he's saying, let's ignore, ignore this argument, this law, ignore this line of reasoning, ignore this thing that says, okay, the Sabbath was changed. Okay, let's go to let's go to the catholic church why the catholic church because um the catholic church was the major church not the only church but the major christian group um in the early ages early ages so it was predominant it was a predominant church okay so this is what it says this is from their website catholic answers did the early church move the sabbath from saturday to sunday and i'm quoting now this i have a, a paraphrase edited Catholics do not worship on the 
Sabbath. This is their words. Catholics do not worship on the Sabbath, which according to Jewish law is the last day of the week, Saturday. This is their answer, okay? When God rested from all the works he had done in creation, okay? Catholics worship on the Lord's Day. So they say, we're not, we're not, we're not even trying to say it's a Sabbath, we're just worshiping on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week. Sunday, and this is their Mass, Sunday, the eighth day. We were shown the, the first day of the week, Sunday, the eighth day, the day when God said, let there be light. God said, let there be light on the first day of the week. The day when Christ rose from the dead, which was Sunday, yeah? The day when the Holy Spirit came from apostles, upon the apostles, their Pentecost. I thought it was 50 days afterwards, but never mind. This is from, their, this is from catholicanswers.com. The early church, now listen carefully, the early church did not move the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Instead, the Sabbath, which was rep represented the completion of the first creation, has been replaced by Sunday, which recalls the new creation. No way that it talks about that. No, no Bible verse. Inaugurated by the resurrection of Christ. Sunday is a day Catholics are bound to keep, not Saturday. No biblical justification is provided. Okay, but this is this is the um, this is their answer. This is the, and and oh, let me just go back. Where where, where do we go? Uh, do we see it here? Yeah, here we go. This is from a Catholic um, Catechism. This is a that you can quote, so you can go pull up this quote CCC two one nine zero and pull it, pull this up, okay, or the reference. See. Okay, there is no biblical evidence for this change. Please remember, the man on the video stated that you won't find a verse. There is no verse quoting a change. Okay, however, it is mentioned in the Bible. Did you know that? The Antichrist will seek to change times and law. The Antichrist, Daniel 7, 25, And he, the Antichrist, shall speak great words against the Most High, God the Father, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, the saints who will persecute them, and think to change times and laws. Change the same times, the Sabbath, change the same laws, the, the Tenth Commandment. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and dividing of time, 2300 days. Okay? This, uh, the, uh, this is what the Antichrist will do. He will change times and laws. Okay? So let's not ignore the facts. Let's be seekers of the truth. If it's truth, we follow it. Okay? That's what events are known for. If it's, if it's biblical truth, we will follow it. If not, we're leaving it and moving on. So let's, go, let's move on with the rest, some more of his thinking. Okay. He's saying he's saying a bunch of words here and there. And then he don't say anything that makes any sense. No, it's not making any sense because we 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 know the truth, okay? <laughs> let's get the microphone, let's get the microphone. Put. And I'm going from that point of view that I don't know the truth. Mm. And what he is convincingly doing is saying that you're being misled by the Adventists because I understand the Acts of the Apostles and where they go in there and they pick out that those verses where they met together to break bread, remember? And they said, oh, well, that must have meant that they were coming together. And I said, well, just because I call you up and ask you out for breakfast doesn't mean that that changes the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But further to what he's trying to do is whenever someone tries to convince you of something by taking away from the truth, 
you generally get this kind of conversation that doesn't make any sense and it's usually loud. Have you ever kind of noticed that, the tinkling bell or the sounding sense? It's usually loud and that's what makes people convinced. Part of the problem with the pandemic was how much they were on TV yelling at everybody about how stupid they were if they didn't do this, remember? And it's the same, we're getting this same kind of thing coming at us from this fellow here. Okay. He's even trying to convince himself. The way he talks, he's trying to convince himself he, he, that he's right. You know, he, know, he knows he's wrong. Yeah, and that's it. When you when you inner lie, you have to you have to believe the lie. And he's trying. Six times so much you believe it. And please remember, his 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 thinking is that we're here, your aim is to win an argument. That's his aim. Well, let's win an argument against the Adventists. When that's the wrong aim altogether. So he's never going to come to truth if he's if that's his aim. So that's why he says you're burying yourself. You're burying yourself, Sister Gail. I was not born or raised in Sabbath keep. Mm. Uh, see, Bible instruction before I joined the church, before I even had the idea of joining the Adventist church. But when she presented the truths from the Bible, there was no argument. Mm. There was absolute scripture and biblical truth explaining why we keep the keep Saturday as the Sabbath. It's the true Sabbath if you want to believe the Bible. Yeah. And I was seeking Bible truth. So yeah. if you want Bible truth, you got to believe it. Sure. And please remember that what the Catholic says is that it's because of tradition that, you know, as Catholics, they hold on to the Sunday because of their tradition. Now, he says something very interesting. He said, the apostles worship on the Sabbath. Yeah. You no, know, on the the apostles, the apostles did worship. He admits that the apostles worshipped on the Sabbath. Okay, now also we know from the Bible that Jesus worshipped on the Sabbath, as was his custom. As was his custom, we know from historical facts that the church worshipped on the Sabbath for hundreds of years. I guess the problem there is, is that people haven't studied very hard the history. Mm. I love history, so it's always mm. been. Mm. But I think I told the story once here in Sabbath school. This Becky person that was over in Cocoa Beach went over to Northern Italy. Uh, and she's not an Adventist, but she went over to Northern Italy and to this wine thing in wine country or whatever. And she and the three other ladies she went with hit it off so much with the with the uh, people that owned this winery that the that the person who owned all this land said, "I'm going to show you something." And he takes them down past the vineyards and down into this down into this valley on his property and into this cave. And she said she was taking pictures of it and posting it on Facebook. And she said, here's this cave with all this, looks like people live there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, um, of Christian mm -hmm. um, artifacts on the, written on the walls and stuff like that. And instantly, I responded back to her and I said, well, if you study the Wadensians, they were Sabbath keepers. And they hid out in the hills of northern Italy, a lot of other places too. But they hid out in the hills of northern Italy, I think. But that where the, that's where this man has led you, is into one of those places. And she has been so fascinated with that ever since that she's read up on them, she's studied them, she's gone online and looked, and she's actually reached out a couple of times and said, I never knew any of that stuff. And remember, what did they say? Ignorance, you know, lives in darkness. People, people don't know any of this. They, they don't study, they don't study history. They don't realize that half of the reasons why the Sabbath keeping went away has an awful lot to do with melding paganism together. Where did that happen? It happened in Rome, you know? And it wasn't that somebody changed the Sabbath. They just 
kind of made excuses. Well, we don't want to look like Jews, mm -hmm. so we'll do this. And we don't want to look like pagans, so we'll do that. The reason why we have so many things that meld together with paganism that we accept as Christian aren't. So it doesn't make sense to me sometimes when somebody just starts yelling about how they perceive the day got changed because he admits himself. There's no biblical proof that somebody, somebody biblically changed it because we move on to the argument, don't we, where people start denying that the scripture has been written. Oh, well, the scriptures were written by men and they make mistakes. You know, all that mm, kind of stuff yeah, too. Yeah. And then you start picking choosing what truth is true. Yeah. So what we find here with him is that he's ignoring certain facts. And when you ignore certain facts, you're going to get lost. If you say, I'm not going to take this into consideration, I'm not going to take that into consideration, I'm going to ignore this, but we're going to press on, you're going to get lost. You've got to have all the facts to come to the right conclusion. Yeah, it says we looked at this picture and several back, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier, of the man you know, with his mm. ears playing. I can't. And all of you have heard this, so it's nothing new. A man convinced against, against his will is of the same one. same opinion still. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And that's why, you know, I'm not interested in, in arguing with people. If people want to know the truth, yeah, I'll share with them the truth. I'm not here to argue with people. These are the facts. Take it, pray about it, ignore it if you want, but these are the facts. Okay. Here's the deal. When they ignore the truth, they create their own truth. Exactly. And that's how they live their life in every respect in their own truth. And you see this a lot with um, um, the evangelical churches. You know, they they don't want to be so-called Catholic or whatever but they are ignoring the biblical facts and they create this whole story, a whole narrative which, is, which has got nothing to do with the truth. And so let's press on with another clip, the next clip. So it's all, you can get the whole video just broken up into sections. So I haven't cut any out. Okay. Did you understand his version of the Okay, and, no, no, it's almost right, but it, it, right then it says he began to rest. Yes. When it when in the in the Bible it's past tense, and he rested on the seventh day, rested, past tense. Okay, not began to rest. Okay, and he'll do it later on again. The key the key thing to what he's saying is this: there's something called Israel Sabbath and God Sabbath. And he's trying to make a distinction between the two, that Israel has their Sabbath and God has his Sabbath. He's trying to make a distinction. And he uses the Exodus 28 to 11 as part of the argument for Israel's Sabbath. Hmm, okay? So let's think about that. Let's think about it. Israel's at Mount Sinai. Who's on Mount Sinai? God. God, God himself is on Mount Sinai. There's fire and thunder and lightning and earthquake and smoke and all the children of Israel are there and God speaks so these are the literal words of God okay and God says this remember in case you forget the Sabbath day there it is to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work your work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God who's the who Who's, who is it belong? The seventh day is the Sabbath. So you can't say this is Israel's Sabbath when it, right in the middle it says the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Okay, so he's setting this up as Israel's Sabbath when it's not saying that. It is God's Sabbath. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. He says settlements. I don't know where we get that from, but... Uh, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is and rested 
There is rested. No, and began to rest. Rested the seventh day. That means on the seventh day of creation, literally, God rested. He didn't say he is still resting. It says on that day he rested. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So what I see here, if this is, if he's saying this is Israel's Sabbath, what I see is that Israel's Sabbath is actually God's Sabbath. Yes. And it's both is one and the same thing. Okay. Go ahead. There's a psychological thing going on here too. Because you notice that that apron he's wearing says detected, mm -hmm. which means he has really searched this out. So he is presenting the truth. Mm -hmm. And and there's one point where he does this little maneuver with his hand where he like does a circle over his mouth and then taps his chest. Mm. What's that about? I don't know. It, it's just spooky. It's spooky. <laughs> Anderson, Anderson, let's get Anderson. How it's the only commandment that says starts with remember. That's just a given right there. Yeah. Because as if God knew it was, they were going to try to change it, which exactly that's what's happened. Yeah. They do. Absolutely right. Okay, let's press on. Let's get the. Remember, he said that he's going to give us a couple of arguments. Okay. Let's get Okay, so let's break that down uh, as well, okay? Let's look at that. So he quotes this passage. He quotes this passage in his version. And the Lord, so this is God the Father, spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, who Sabbaths? Oh, so are these Israel Sabbaths or God's Sabbaths? Now, he just says they're plural, okay? And that is a fact. Okay? The plural is in the Hebrew. I'll explain why later. Okay? Uh, and he shall keep it for it's a, it's, it's a sign. It's a distinguishing mark. It's an emblem. You know, when you start keeping the Sabbath, okay, you are saying you, you are different from everybody else. It's a sign between me and you throughout your generations. It will always be this, that ye may know that I am the Lord that does what? So God is sanctifying us, and part of the sanctification process is going to include what? Sabbath for our observance. So if you're not keeping the true Sabbath, is it, if you're, sorry, let me say this. If you are knowingly not keeping the true Sabbath, can you be sanctified? No. No. Okay. Now, one. He, okay. So he's, he's. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Yeah. Because much of the world sincerely do, do not know. Yeah. For the time for, being. For the time being. And, and then the Sunday law will come. Until the three angels' message gets it out to the whole world. Amen. Okay. So let's move on. Let's let's. This verse is pretty straightforward. Then it says this: six days may six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Okay. Um, then he, he emphasizes this verse. I, I don't know why he's emphasizing this. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath day, because he's speaking to the children of Israel. That this is the reason why you should be doing it, all children of Israel. And then he uses this verse to say that. Because it's pointing back to the creation that this is the original. I don't see that written there, verse 17. I don't see verse 17 saying there is an original. Now, let's let just be clear there is often a shadow and the original, okay, as in the sanctuary message. Okay, the, what we have on earth is a shadow of things above, it says so clearly in the Bible. There's the, the, the shadow of the, the ordinances carried out on earth are being carried out in heaven in reality. Okay? The Bible says so in numerous places. Okay? Look at Hebrews and in Leviticus. Okay? So, but it didn't say that the Sabbath is a shadow or anything like that of the original. It just said, you're doing this to commemorate. 
to remember that this is the God who did this for you in the beginning. Okay? Am I, am I reading too much into this? I think I believe that's what the, the, the verse, this verse is saying. It's not saying that this is a shadow of the original. He's saying it is a shadow of the original. But I don't see it there. I don't see that written. Okay? But once again, what is clearly seen is Israel's Sabbath is God's Sabbath. They're one and the same thing. Now let get Gail, Sister Gail, Paula, Paula, Sister Paula. Thank you. And the, the purpose, one of the purposes of the Sabbath is to remind us who our Creator is. Mm -hmm. And every that is it that every Sabbath when we come together to worship God. We are reminded who our Creator is and what love and respect and worship He deserves. Exactly. And one of the things I've heard, and I believe it's still true, that there's nothing in nature on this earth or throughout the universe that goes on a seven day cycle. Only the Sabbath in creation, the only way to explain this, um, the seven day cycle is creation now the day we know about this the the uh, rotation of the earth the the week uh sorry the the month rotation of the moon the year we know is you know we and everything works on cycles between the sun and the moon and you know the yeah but when it comes to the week only creation points to the week mm. so paula well i just remember there was mary burns presentation and there was one thing she said about the cellular structure of plants and animals and how they regenerate after the seven day cycle. And uh, I'd have to look into it a little bit more, but I just found it fascinating mm -hmm. that, like you say, all nature creation points to the creator. Okay. So let's go back to this idea of Sabbath, because the, the Bible text did say Sabbaths, plural. So what is all that about? Now, let me bring you to remind you of what the Jew, what Moses set up for the Israelites. Because by the time they left Mount Sinai, they would have a tabernacle, they would have a priest in certain garments, they would have altars, there were lampstands, there were the most holy place. They had all these um, instruments which pointed to a yearly cycle of festivities feast days okay now these feast days were special holy days you know the very same word we get holidays from holy days and there were seven feast days which they celebrate four in the spring um four in the spring and three in the fall okay and and the and these are the calendar events for these events okay now let's take one of them in in particular let's look at the day of atonement Okay, this is one for example, just for example of the rest. So with the Day of Atonement, we need to know when it fell. Okay, it says this in Leviticus 6, 29 verse 31. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month of the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. Okay, so let's just leave it there for a second. Okay, so it says the Day of the Month, Day of Atonement was in the seventh month, on the 10th day. So every year, 7th month, 10th day was a day of atonement. Okay? So it was rather like the 4th of July. The 4th of July, 7th month, 4th day. Every single year, 7th month, 4th day. Now, what day of the week does the 4th of July fall on? It, it, it varies. It varies. It varies. It, it it can be a Saturday, it can be a Sunday, it can be a Tuesday, it can be a Wednesday, it can be any day. But whatever day it falls on, it is a holiday. Correct? Okay, whatever day it falls on, it's a holiday. You hope it falls on something like a Friday <laughs> or a Monday. <laughs> so you have this long weekend, okay? But, you know, but, um, if, and it falls, if it falls, it falls on a, 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 a Sabbath or Sunday, you know, you think, oh, man. It's a bit waste, a bit waste, okay? I, I, yeah, so it, it's always it's always a holiday, whatever day is the week. The same is true, the same is true 
for uh, the Sabbath because the Day of Atonement was treated as a Sabbath. Okay, it says so. Let's go back to the same verse. Remember, I just blanked the screen out. Here it is. In the seventh day of the, of the of seventh month, on the tenth day, and it's verse 31. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you. Okay, so it wasn't any, any ordinary day. It was treated as a Sabbath day. So you could literally have a week with two Sabbaths in it. A weekly Sabbath and a Sabbath from one of these festivities. Okay, just like we have may have two rest days. We may have uh, the Saturday, Sunday, and then we may have a, a Tuesday because it's a holiday. Okay, they these other were the Sabbaths. That was celebrated okay and this isn't just an Adventist understanding of it it's you know cross Christendom uh, Protestantism they had they know this concept of Sabbath and Sabbaths okay so let's press on with the, what he's saying okay okay Truth. Okay, okay. So we've got some points. We've got Sister Jeannie at the back, Sister Paula. You want to do some running? And then um then we're gonna have to break it down. Okay. So we're never supposed to work, huh? <laughs> That's one of the points I make. Okay, if if it's true, if he's what he's saying it is, and every day is Sabbath, that means we never work. We never work. It's all continual rest. Which is not, it's not the case, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We, we, let, let, let's, let's look. At, let's let's go. Please remember. I, I hope you are listening to carefully how he quoted the scriptures because he changed it once again, okay? So he he's basically saying God's original Sabbath is every day and it's and never ends. So every day and it never ends. That's that's basically. He's arguing. I'm, I'm not lying. This is basically what he's saying. Okay. Now let's look at what he says. The Bible text. He says, verse two, and on the seventh day God ended His work, which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day. He didn't say rested. He said began to rest. Yes. He inserted that. He changed the Bible to prove his point. Okay. And then it says on, on verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Okay? He sanctified which day? The end of but if it's, it's seventh day, it's every day. Seventh day. Paula? Which right eight. So Saturday night was the beginning of the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so it's Friday evening. Yeah. 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 So uh, look, he says, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he began to rest, he said. So did it say he began to rest? No, it says, and rested, rested. from all. Let me rested and stopped working from all his work, which God created and made. So in order to believe what he wants to believe, he has to change the Bible. It's just like Jehovah Witnesses who changed John chapter 1 where it says, and the word was with God and the word was a God. That's what they call a God. Not that he was God. They changed the Bible to bend it. It's, it's not in the Hebrew. It's not in the Greek. It's not in the Aramaic. They changed the word to suit themselves. Okay? That, that you're not pursuing truth. Okay? In, the, in that way. Paula. And the changes are so subtle. I think because I know, or I've, I've only ever read it as it is here, mm. I was thinking, <coughs> but he's proving the point. Mm. I missed the subtle changes of the began to rest. And mm. I, but he's, he's confirming and affirming everything that the Bible says. It's only when you've pointed out mm. the changes that I thought, oh, yeah, because I'm only hearing it the way I've always heard it, sure. which is from the Bible. And so people can get into a pattern of hearing things as well so mine is i guess more of a positive experience because i'm hearing truth and i've only ever heard it that when i didn't pick up the subtleties but people could be hearing error of but course he's hearing error and not picking it up it's such a subtle thing isn't it and that's when you if you you know when you are 
when you're reading a book, it's different from watching a video or a YouTube. Because you, when you're watching a video, you're keeping up with it. Okay? And points are made so quickly. You don't have time to process it. But when you're reading a book, you read a bit. And then, have you ever put, done that? You read a bit. And then you stop and you think for a long while. And then you think, okay, let me get back to it. And you read some more and you stop. And, you, and you're processing it as you go along. Okay? It's, when, it's in the processing of, the, of these facts, you start to say, oh, no, this is wrong. And this is wrong. And this is wrong. That's why it's very important to journal because you can read something. You may not get it all, but when you start to write it down, a lot more comes out for you. Now, let's press on. Okay. Which day did God bless? The seventh day. He blessed the seventh day. One day he blessed. He didn't bless all of it. He didn't bless a week. He said one day. So this whole idea that every day is a Sabbath is a lie. It's a lie. Out of the pit of hell. Because God only blessed one day. He rested on... Every day he's doing work, 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 work. This day is different because there is no work. There is no work. Now he does say something true. All the rest of the day, he just say evening in the morning, evening in the morning, evening in the morning. And it's not mentioned on the seventh day. I do not know why. But does it make, does that justify his argument? No. No, it doesn't just. Mm -hmm. Because all the rest of the days of the week are. Mm -hmm. Paula, you have to be. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, now the other thing I want to point out is this. Jesus has a particular attitude towards the Sabbath when it relates to humanity. He says this, Sabbath was made for man. And we see this in creation. Okay, There's only one man. Only one woman. Okay, And Sabbath was made for them and their generations. Okay, So it's for all of mankind. Okay, Sabbath was a gift to man. So at creation, the Sabbath was made by God for man. Everything that God created was for man. The Sabbath was made for man. Sister Jeannie, Sister Paula. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think there's Sabbath in heaven because you need the day and the night to know when the seventh day is. Okay, that's interesting. Nice concept. And and even on the earth, the Saturday isn't the same here as it is in Australia. Okay, I love that. So the so the question about heaven. We're gonna to get to heaven, but Sabbath is celebrated in heaven. Now, on Earth, we know that the moon comes out at night. Correct? Not always correct because you see the moon during the day. Okay, and in the day you see the moon in the sky. Okay, now. How we see the moon can be just how we see the sun in the future. Okay, so remember, God's glory is brighter than anything. So it's gonna, God's glory is gonna outshine the sun. Oh, in heaven. Oh, you're talking about the first thousand years. Okay, I'm sure I'll, I'll just go by God's clock. Whatever he says. When he says it's Sabbath, I'll, okay, I'm, I'm coming. I'll be right there. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. So I was thinking about the new earth. You're talking about actually heaven, the first thousand years in heaven. Okay. That's good. I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay. Everything that God created was for man. He created Sabbath for all of mankind. He didn't create the Sabbath just for a nation. So when God when God meets the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, is he creating or reaffirming what he has already made? He's reaffirming what he's already made. He made because he points back to creation. Okay, He says, this is, what I, this is what was at the beginning. So what was at the beginning, I'm just reestablishing it right here and now because the children of Israel had lost their concept of the Sabbath when being slaves in Egypt. 
So he says, this is why you're doing it. You lost it in Egypt for through 400 years of slavery. I'm just reaffirming it for you, reestablishing what I made at the beginning. It's one and the same Sabbath. There isn't two Sabbaths. Go ahead. And he's actually putting it in writing. And when it's in writing by his own finger, mm -hmm. it's... I don't know what... It, let me help you what you're saying. You're saying this. You're saying, I think you're saying this. The God in Genesis, when he meets Moses, he writes the law down. Yes. Okay. He writes it with his finger. He established it. So why would he then make an inferior Sabbath? Well, and it's for our remembrance. It yeah. is directly from the finger of his hand. Yeah, exactly. And it's even more valid. You're right. It makes it just, you know. Yeah. yeah. He didn't make a mistake. So what he what he what he did in it what he did in um in, in Exodus with Israelites wasn't because of you know you know let me just say this when God sets up the Jewish nation. He talks about divorce. Remember, we talked about this morning. And he says, out of the hardness of your heart, we allow this type of divorce. But I say unto you, Jesus says, and he establishes a higher principle. Okay? It's okay. But God says, God says, but we don't have that with the Sabbath. We don't have, we, we have the children of Israel um, burdening down the Sabbath with regulations and make it, making it oppressive, not making it the joy that it should be, but we don't have God saying, okay, the Sabbath is wrong or whatever you do. You know, there's none of that. There's none of that whatsoever there in the in the Testament. Yeah. So, so we have God laying out his law, his Ten Commandments. He's given the Israelites their their duties and their to be obedient to him he's taken them out of egypt he's brought them into the promised land he's begged them to follow his law and his will and they completely depart 100 percent over and over and over again from that so it's it's not that we have two separate agendas going on the you know the sanctuary in heaven the sanctuary on earth or the sabbath in heaven and the sabbath on earth it's the same thing that god's trying to get his people on earth to abide by his commandments his will his sabbath and we keep departing from that. Exactly. So, and 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 the world has departed 100% by keeping Sunday. Mm. So they're constantly steering away from God's law and making a separate their own agenda. Yeah. It's yeah. Not that there's a separate agenda for us to keep that God wants us to keep a separate agenda from Himself. It's that we are keeping a separate agenda from God because we're not keeping His law. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We 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 when we we're straying. God's trying to bring us back. So over these 400 years, Israel has strayed, even though they may have good reason for straying, but it's bringing them back, saying this is where it is. So what's, what happens at Exodus is just a reaffirmation of what happens in Genesis and a reaffirmation of what Jesus does in the New Testament. Jeannie, um, Tish and Jeannie. God is very specific in what we're not supposed to do on that day. And it's all day. So when you say... We keep the Sabbath, and other people keep Sunday. They don't really keep Sunday. They just get up and go to church on Sunday, but they still mow their lawn, and they still go shopping, and they're not really keeping. If they're calling it their Sabbath, they're not keeping it. They're just going to a building on the corner for a couple of hours, and then they go about their business as a general rule. That's how most of Christianity treats it now. And if they want to call it their Sabbath, they're actually kind of blasphemous there because they're really not keeping that day. Yeah. Not, not even to even like the Bible lab. Remember the, the Catholics are saying it's the Lord's Day. We're not even calling it the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a Jewish thing. Okay. So, but even in the Lord's Day, how they keep this Lord's Day is no reflection of how we're, we're meant to worship God. No, no. Sister Jeannie? I think it's so important for us to understand why we keep the Sabbath. And the, the Lord tells us, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. It's so important to understand 
the Sabbath was made so that we understand we're created. Mm -hmm. So we have a creator. We have someone who's going to guide us, someone who's made us, someone who knows all about us. Otherwise, we're just going to be lost out here in the world. Not no no guide. N no guide. We just do whatever we want because we're our only God. Yeah. Yeah, so we have no authority to answer to. Yeah. So when you when you're a creator, it's, you 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 have a parent to which you have to answer to. Okay? Yes. And and man doesn't want that. Man wants to be his own god. And a father who's taking care of us. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to this evening and morning. So he said the evening and morning isn't there, and it's true. But the word day is there all this time. And on the seventh day, on the seventh day, on the seventh day, and the Hebrew word for seventh day includes this whole thing, evening and morning. The evening and morning, 24th. Yeah. So, so, when, so basically when the Bible says on, the, on such and such a day, it's, it's literally saying on such and such an evening and morning. Okay? Like anybody testimony about having a hard time getting the, the enough, uh, enough corrects. Mm -hmm. Because at, at one time I was just frustrated, so I would just read through it. And they would twist it also. They would put a thing on the right of, of the sentence mm -hmm. over here. And the next time they would put it over here, and you could read the sentence and get the same concept. Okay? But you were wrong. Mm. I was wrong. On one test, it would be correct. On the next test, that same question, the answer to that question would be wrong, incorrect mm. because they flipped it around like they do here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and finally, in that last test, I said, you know what? I'm going to read these things backwards or tones, and I'm going to get it. Mm. And I didn't get it. Because I, 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 read it, I read it around and figured it out. Okay, now, yeah. Now, he, the next thing he said is this the Sabbath ends when there is a new heaven and a new earth. That's what he said. Correct? He said that. The Sabbath occurs. But Isaiah 66, verse 23, says something different. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath, to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Isaiah 66 is talking about the new earth. The new earth. When God makes, where, you know, the lion will lay down the, with the lamb and all this. This wonderful place where God makes. He says, on this new earth, every new moon you'll come and worship me. And every Sabbath you'll come to worship me. That means sometimes twice a week we'll go and worship God. You know, so it, there's going to be Sabbaths throughout eternity. For as long as there is a God, there will be Sabbaths. So it's not going to end, and you know, when, yeah, so I think he's incorrect there. Okay. Tom. Just looking this one up, uh, that you're talking about with Isaiah 66. Um, and I don't doubt what you said because it's what I've always believed too. But how do we know that's talking about the new earth? Okay. Does it talk about that earlier in that chapter? Yeah. We could, when, you, when you read the whole chapter. I know when I would teach about the Sabbath, I would show that it was at creation. It was in the commandments. You see, you see it all through the Old Testament. You see Jesus observing it, the disciples keeping it. And then you see it in the new earth. So the Sabbath wasn't given, taken away, and then given back. It's a golden thread that goes all the way through the Bible and history and eternity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's talking about the new heavens. Okay, moving, moving on. Let's get to his next. Uh, I think that maybe this may be the last yeah. section. Okay.
Okay, so the first of all, first of us, I don't know if there's a murmuring, you're like, you're going to stone me. <laughs> so, first of all, let's understand what he's saying. Let's understand what he's saying. He's saying that there is a rest from Hebrews, a Sabbath rest, okay, which we are to enter in by faith the moment we believe, okay. Okay, we ent- and today, wait, the moment you do it today, the moment you do it today, you enter that rest. And it's this God's Sabbath rest. That's, what, that's his argument. Okay? Correct. Okay? So, let's look at the King James Version. Okay? Let's look at the King James Version. Let us therefore fear less a promise being left us of entering into his rest. I'm going to talk about this word rest here. Which he said was, is, is from the Greek Sabbath. Any of you should seem to come short of it, for unto us was a gospel preached as well as unto them. Okay? But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I swore into my in my wrath, if they shall enter into in my rest, into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, first of all, we're going to break it down. It's kind of complicated. So let's look at this. That word rest. What is the Blue Letter Bible? Blue Letter Bible is a website. Okay. If you don't know Greek and Hebrew, just go to Blue Letter Bible and you type in the verse. And you see all the words listed down, and you click on a word, and it'll show you the Greek or the Hebrew or the Aramaic, what what Strong's number it is, what it means, and so forth. It's 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 not it's not produced by Adventist Church. It's just produced by um, whoever produced it. Chris, I don't know what they're okay. So they say the King James translates the Strong. This is the number for this word rest. So each each word in the Bible has a, has a unique number. So wherever this word rest is, this Greek word rest is, it will be translated in various ways, okay? And it's, it's only used nine times in the King James Version of the Bible, okay? And its literal meaning is this, a putting to rest, like in calming of the winds, or a resting place, metaphorically, the heavenly blessedness in which God dwells, okay? That rest. Okay? It's got nothing to do with the Sabbath. Zero to do with the Sabbath. Okay. Now, to understand, to understand Genesis, uh, Hebrews 4, 1 to 11, we should actually look at what precedes it. Okay. So let's go through Hebrews 3, 6 and 19. If you look in your Bible, these are the words that precede it. There's no verse 20. Or we'll go straight into Hebrews 4, verse 1. This is what it says, and I've taken it from the New King James Version. Why? Because I want this title there. This title isn't in the text, okay? But the title says, Failure to enter the wilderness, failure, failure of the wilderness wanderers, okay? So it's talking about the children of Israel going through the wilderness for 40 years, well, going through the children wilderness, getting to the promised land, not entering the promised land, and having to go back and wander around for 40 years. That's what it's talking about. And it says this, For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Because what's, what Paul is reminding them is that everybody over the age of 20 who refused to go into the promised land died in the wilderness over the next 40 years. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? Remember, the rest means promise, holy land, heavenly place. But to those who who did not obey, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Okay, so and this and that fits in with we know the narrative, we know what happened with the children of Israel. They they marched out to Egypt, went to Sinai, got established as a nation, went to the promised land. It didn't take them long. Sent spies over, the spies came back, they said, nah, we don't want to go. 
God says, okay, you're not going, you're going to die in the wilderness because of your unbelief to enter. Okay? okay. Now, go, now, wait with that in mind, with that background in mind, let us read verse 40, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, and see if it does not make more sense now. Let us therefore fear, worry, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. In other words, we need to be careful that we don't fail the way they did. We have a promise to enter an eternal rest. We shouldn't fail to enter it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So we've heard the good news. They heard the good news. But the word preached did not profit them, I, the Israelites, not being mixed with faith in that they heard it. Okay, so they heard the good news. They, they didn't have the faith that was needed to turn this in this message, it is promised into reality. For we which have believed do enter into rest. So if you believe, if you take the promise, mix it with your faith, you will enter into rest. Remember this rest talks about heaven. Okay, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although their works were finished from the foundation of the world. So in other words, even though everything was established and set up from the foundation, Genesis 3.15, okay, uh, as the lamb, remember the Jesus Christ was a lamb sacrificed before the foundations of the world. Okay, so for our price for, for redemption was already paid. Okay, so we cannot, everything's in place for us to enter, but we need to believe. Then it goes on to say this, for he spoke in a certain place. Now, when he says, for he spoke in a certain place, it's like he's saying, for example. Okay, then he starts to talk about the Sabbath. Of the seventh day of the wise, this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. So he's saying, listen, there is, let me give you an example. For Look at this situation. Look at this illustration about God resting from all his works. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth there, some must enter therein, and they to whom was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, in other words, he said, listen, today, believe. Don't put off your belief until tomorrow, the next day, some future day. Today, if you hear the promise, if you understand what's going on, believe now, accept now, so that you can enter in. There's nothing, nothing about saying a Sabbath rest here. No. Okay. So, and, and w let me see if I, okay. Okay. So in this illustration, he's saying that God created a rest, a Sabbath rest, and people fail to benefit from the Sabbath rest. And please remember, isn't that true with the Jewish nation? The Sabbath was a burden to them. They would dread the Sabbath. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. It was awful for them. They, you know, you know, we look forward to the Sabbath. They hated the Sabbath because it was a burden, and they didn't. Uh, they, yeah, well, it couldn't begin man. But I'm talking about, you know, with the Jews. Remember, the Hebrews is written to Jews, okay? And he's saying they were, they, they, you know, they they failed to enjoy or benefit from the true Sabbath rest, okay? So this Sabbath, which is used here, is an illustration of faith and obedience. Okay? Now, then he talks about King David. Today, if you hear my, his voice, it's, and this is taken from, this is what David said. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't resist, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Going back to that same illustration about them, the children of Israel going through the promised land, going through the desert and not entering the rest. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Okay? In other words, don't put it off for later. You must trust and obey now. Okay? Let's finish his argument. There is zero Bible proof 
Have you ever seen that woman on VAPN? I never saw and the set didn't even look like it was a free ABN set. This ain't free ABN. No, he said that woman that he was having talk. Mm. I thought he said she was on free ABN. No, no, he didn't say she was on. Okay, no. So that last part of what he said, the last part of what he said, is no scriptural proof about celebrating the Lord's Day. There's nothing. You know, Jesus also celebrates certain things which are which are new, brand new. You know, this do he in remembrance of me. What was that? Lord's Supper. Yeah, we take the bread and the wine, and Jesus says, do this. We, you know, was that new? It was brand new. Okay, so what it, he makes it very clear, abundantly clear, when he's changing something, or modifying something, or clarifying something. He says, you've heard it say, a man should not murder, but I tell you, if you hate somebody, You've already committed. He makes it abundantly clear. There's nothing like this. Was something so major? No. Okay, Sister Lavandra. It's just so many red flags there. <laughs> um, because he's referring to Paul and using Paul's words, but yet Paul was a disciple of Christ and Paul kept the Sabbath too. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't understand why he's referring to Paul and like Let's be like Paul, but Paul was also keeping, he was keeping the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, I noticed too that, that he's saying we can, you know, the Sabbath is every day. It's, it's just, it's a lot of confusion because he's saying the Sabbath is every day when you, what, as soon as you come into Christ or you're in Christ Jesus that becomes your Sabbath, but yet and still he's uplifting Sunday. So if the Sabbath is every single, if it's whenever I come into to the Lord, if I come to the Lord on a Wednesday, okay, and according to him, if that's my Sabbath, why do I have to lift up Sunday as well? So it's just a whole bunch of confusion. I'm not <laughs> understanding what he's trying to say is not, you know, solid. In the end, he basically says, you know, we celebrate Sunday because it's the day the Lord resurrected. That's basically the Catholic belief. And there's no biblical evidence for that whatsoever. I don't know anything about first time I've seen this video, first and last. Thanks to be a Christian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sister Melissa? He's completely misquoting Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 8. So whatever translation he's reading from has been changed. Yeah. Because it says, there remains, therefore, and he's saying, a Sabbath rest for the people of God, and the word Sabbath is not in that verse. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on with that thought. So let's look, this is what you're saying. There remaineth therefore a, a rest to the people of God. That's what it says in the King James Version. Okay. Now, please remember I said before, I gave you the um, strong concordance. So he added the word Sabbath. Okay. He did. he did. Okay. Now listen carefully. And he correctly did. He correctly did. Should I tell you why? Let's go back to Blue Letter Bible. The word they use there is Sabbatismos. It's the only place in the Bible where they use this word. They're, so Paul is once again emphasizing this very special connection that if, when you enter your Sabbath rest, it's an illustration of you entering this eternal rest. Okay, And he says this, this word, Sabbatismos, is so he, when he talks about Sabbath rest, it, it's, it's, he's correct to add that word there. And he should put it in brackets. Sabbath rest, okay, because of the Greek word they use here. But all the other references is not, it's the other word that they use. I can't say it in the Greek, okay. It's the other word which talks about this eternal rest, okay. So this is an illustration between the two. The Sabbath Tismos, where this is the only place in the Bible where it occurs. The only place. So none of the other references are, are there, okay. 
Fox says, if you love our people. Mm-hmm. I think it, it goes on to say it shall not burden some or break their fast. Mm-hmm. If you know, if we love Jesus, we want to obey him. Mm-hmm. And give all this mumbo jumbo that <laughs> doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. God order truth. You just need to hold the mic, hold the mic, hold the mic. Hold. So it's not for us, it's for those who are listening online. God says, God is a God of order and a truth. Oh, yeah. You know, God is a God of order, a God of truth. And He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm. And so this is our love this is how we show our love to him by obeying him and he is very straight he's very to the point and there is proof in everything he says proof we don't have to guess what he means we just have to believe truth okay Let's have Jeannie and then Phil. Oh, Phil, it's right here. Let's do Phil, then Jeannie. Would God have said, excuse me with my voice, but remember the Sabbath day. Remember. But there's no day to remember. It's any day you might think of or change the Sabbath for you versus you versus me. If he says remember, there's got to be some details mm-hmm. to remember, I think. He would, he would argue that he had that remembering is for the Jews. Yeah. He said, the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath, a specific Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he think the Ten Commandments were only for the Jews? I mean, God spoke that with his own mouth. Mm. Was there, he put it in writing with his finger in stone. That's pretty permanent. Yeah. How does he get around the Ten Commandments? I don't know. I don't know how he gets around it. No, he probably says he's keeping it. He's here, he keeps all the commandments. He says, this is the Sabbath. Because every day is the Sabbath. Well, then you have to change what God wrote. He, he would do. Uh-huh. But, yeah, anyway. So this, I think it's important to follow a person's line of argument, especially uh, if you get into Galatians, you get into Romans, you get into Ephesians, these doctrinal books, okay? You know, and same with Hebrew. You have to say, where does Paul start? Who's it written to? What's his line of argument? And Paul is talking about, hey, the, you need to back up your faith with works, okay? You, 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 can't, you can't fail to enter. So it's about this righteousness by faith. And he says that, you know, there, is the, there was some false ones. But look, look at Paul. This is how Paul describes himself prior to his conversion. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concession. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in his Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he have wherefore he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrew, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. This is how Paul describes himself prior to his conversion. And then he says this, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Everything that I used to esteem before and now thrown it down. It's useless, okay? Because I've entered into an eternal Sabbath rest, okay? 
a, a better rest, a better point of view. So, because the book of Hebrews was written for the Hebrews, especially Hebrews who are becoming Christian. So it was aimed at the Hebrews. It was also aimed at Hebrews who are now Christians who are kind of thinking, perhaps we should go back to the way we were, go back to all our old traditions and stuff like that. And they was kind of slipping back, okay? And he said, no, 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 you need to, we, we have an excellent, more excellent way. And if we go back, we will fail to enter the rest that God has for us. If we slip up, we will fail to end. If we do not have belief to go on forward and accept Christ Jesus, then we will fail. This is the argument of the Hebrews. And then he goes on to talk about the sanctuary, talks about um, um, uh, the faithful and all this. So we need to have this type of faith that proceeds and goes on and moves on. That's what Hebrews is about. The Sabbath thing is just an illustration. Okay, please remember there's no Bible verse stating that we should honor Sunday for Jesus. There's not one, not even a hint of one. Okay, and then some questions, these are some points you pointed out as well. If every day is a Sabbath, then how do you keep every day holy and cease from working? You can't. Okay, so what happens is the Sabbath loses its sacredness. That's what happens. If every day is a Sabbath, then we just do every day. And then, the, you know, we have, the, we have this special Sabbath blessing. You stop work, you get your family together, you open up with worship, and you have this Sabbath blessing, you know? And you, you come together, you fellowship with other believers, you have a Sabbath blessing, and then you close Sabbath out. This, the whole day is a Sabbath. You, you miss all of that. You miss. It's the Sabbath because like any other day. And who wants that? The Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. So I hope I explained your video. Thanks for sharing it with me, Anderson. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, and um, I just encourage you to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the Sabbath day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified it. Let us always remember that. The Sabbath day, not a Sabbath day. Remember the test is coming. This Sabbath test is coming. Sooner than we realize. We're praying for a few more years. We're praying for a little bit more time to get ready. But it's coming. It's coming. Let us all be ready. Let us pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for allowing us to spend this time together. Interesting arguments that the world are putting forward. But we know, there, Lord, that if we just walk with you, your Holy Spirit will say, this is the way, walk ye in it. We will never be led astray by your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit provides a light for our feet, a light for our path. We do not want to go astray there, Lord. We want to be pursuers of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we pray their Lord, that when we find the truth, that we will hold on to it. We thank you, their Lord, for minds that think and reason. We pray, their Lord, that you'll increase the capacity and capabilities of our mind so that we can understand more, memorize more, learn more, and share more as a result. We pray, their Lord, that we will truly appreciate your Sabbath. That will be a blessing to us. And we thank you, God, for this time. We pray all of this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.